and over here um, this is the east side and you'll see we got tomatoes growing uh, here and there which is kind of a I don't know if you'd call it permaculture or not but uh, we just kind of let things grow where they will where they like to grow best uh, on their own but as you can see here's a bunch of garlic and a lot of tomatoes popped up over here and as you can tell as I'm panning through here it's kind of like a we ca I call it a trough garden um, because it just kind of gets flooded out you know the whole way and um, since it's on the east side it gets afternoon shade so I don't really have to do too much for these tomatoes over here let me show you some other ones that I have though so this is the uh, more northern side of the yard and you'll see a uh, tomato growing right here and I've got a little guy growing on there and a couple there and if I back out you'll see this is in uh, my tangelo tree so uh, getting a little bit of shade west is this way so the tree is shading him there or her um, so that's kind of the beneficial uh, companion planting thing there with with that here in the in the desert so I'm getting a natural shade from the tree that's what's helping this one survive in the 105 degree uh, weather so far and let me show you one other one right behind it this one is an experiment because this one gets all the afternoon sun you see a great big sunflower growing in there with a uh, um, Cape Honeysuckle. Yeah, that's right. Cape Honeysuckle. But back to the tomato. Uh, this one faces west and gets uh, direct sun all night. And, uh, well, yeah, all night. From, uh, gosh, from probably 11 o'clock until the sun goes down. So, it's an experiment to see if it gets fried. There is no shade for it. You can see I got some other stuff just popping up in there. Um, so I might stick uh, a couple of bamboo stakes in there. You know, one on, like right here. Do some kind of a little drape or something of shade cloth, 50% or so. We'll see when it gets warmer. But uh, yeah, it's flowering. It likes it here. And so let me go. Let me go show you uh, some other tomatoes All to right. see how they're doing. So as uh, I walk across the yard here, make our way to these cool Eureka lemons that have the uh, companion planted tomatoes. And you'll notice um, this is a west facing wall. So uh, I'm looking right here, behind me is west. And that means this gets the brunt of the afternoon sun, the hottest part of the day and uh, it's already been you know through the whole day half a day uh, of the intense heat and uh, when everything's getting some shade on all, all the other parts of the uh, property this guy is still getting the sun so you could see though it didn't it's not really affecting it we got 105 yesterday 106 actually and I get I get some tomatoes in here and I just attribute that to deep watering um, not very often a little more so in this because as you can tell it's uh, what you would call a container it's an old concrete irrigation pipe and it's got another tree in here so um, it's gonna be a heavy drinker and it's just an experiment too you know uh, see what see what happens these guys are real heavy nitrogen feeders so they say but uh, they're really green they look really good and they're producing fruit they're producing flowers and uh, it was 106 yesterday and it's still been in the hundreds past uh, you know about four days prior and uh, what I do to them is I just mulch them here with uh, this is alfalfa straw and uh, that's pretty much it I, I picked these two off of this plant earlier and uh, I was waiting to do the video to, to do any more because, uh, let's see, check it out. Not too bad, huh? Pretty cool. Let's go ahead and uh, get this guy. And they really come off easily when uh, when they're ready. I, I want to get that guy. 
just for just for the fun of it. Let's see. Not not totally ready, but uh, I'll eat it. So yeah, and look at there's a uh, dropped them a couple of varieties in here growing. So it's like whatever grows and, and likes it, and uh, that's what stays. So yeah, it's just it's got fruit all over it and flowers too. So uh, let me show you. I got some more right here. This is uh, kind of a hurting cat's claw vine. But uh, check out this, you know, more tomatoes. You gotta probably put some alfalfa straw under here so the you know, wind, you know, doesn't rub them on that slate. But they're doing good. Probably put a little bit more mulch in there. And then right here, this one I thinned out from the other concrete tube just to see, you know, the effect if I got better plants. And uh, I'm not gonna thin it next time. The other side is. A lot more full and they're not struggling but we got flowers and we got fruit so and the tree is looking okay I mean uh, it's got some new leaves and it's got some fruits but uh, I mean it's a little bit sorry yeah and this is a gamble though uh, the west side of the of the house with the wall reflective heat uh, it's gonna be a challenge but the other one's doing pretty good so we'll see. They've only been in these pots not e not even a year, so it's kind of a gamble. Throw threw them in at a pretty good time it's for them to root out over the winter, but it, it could have been planted a little earlier. But anyways, back to the tomatoes. If we uh, go to this side here, man, what a lovely smell these star jasmines. Uh, we've got this is an heirloom one, heirloom variety watermelon, I think it's called, but uh, it's flowering. So we got some production. Sometimes when it gets real hot. Blossoms fall off, you know, production stops. Um, wow, there we go. We got we got something going on. And there was another one. Okay, here we go. There's one more. I'm not sure the variety of that one. So, and this is the west side of the house. Yeah, you got something there. Might be a tomatillo, maybe tomato. But uh, oh, and yeah, here's one in the garden bed. See if I can zoom in. Alright, a few more spots to show you. This is also uh, west facing, although we have a little block wall here that, that blocks a little bit of it. And this is also in a uh, citrus tree, which uh, I salvaged. It was kind of like in the throwaway pile, you know, so it's still a gamble too. But uh, it's looking okay. The high heat is uh, a little much sometimes. But, as you can tell, we well, have fruit production, and these were all volunteers. They just kind of came up on their own. And, oh yeah, look here, we got the cactus. Cactus growing back there. So, doing pretty good. I got to mulch the top of that a little bit better. Let me show you one of the shots. All right. So these are the ones that uh, they get a lot of the sun too. This is a real um, morning sun spot here. It's uh, pretty much almost almost all day, but uh, I haven't watered it maybe two or three times. And you can see it's got some some fruit developing there and, and ripening. But I do notice that uh, because it does get a lot of sun, I'll get like uh, looks like some sunburn or something. Like you look at this one here. And it'll just kind of brown out on you and just kind of look like a weird color. I just pick them off, throw them away. I'm not sure if it's from the sun or if maybe this is a strange hybrid and I'm just getting some weird, you know, growth or whatnot. But I've uh, been picking off these for quite a while. It tastes really good. There's a couple more back here getting, getting ready. But uh, yeah, this one is really, really a nice surprise. So I'm not doing much. Haven't even fertilized it, watered it a few times. That's it. I got them growing all throughout here. A shadow here. But uh, as you can tell, in with the uh, bougainvillea. 
They like it. Look at that cluster right there. So we'll see when it gets a few more days. If we get a few more days of 106 in a row, uh, they'll probably be over it. But you never know. I've interplanted them with peppers on the east side and they get the shade and uh, I've had them grow for uh, two years. And you gotta get the indeterminate kind. There's two kinds, right? Determinate and indeterminate. Indeterminate will uh, will grow until the uh, weather kills it. And determinate has a specific uh, time it's going to retire. It's gonna expire. So check it out if you want to know more about it. But indeterminate and determinate. Those are those ones you see they can get like uh, 15 feet tall sometimes. You know those indeterminate ones just keep growing and growing. So there you go, deep water, infrequently, mulch it really heavy, and uh, you'll do fine.